Hey everyone, my name is Nathan Cooper and welcome back to SIS Film Breakdowns. In sticking with the 2021 NFL Draft theme, this episode features new Georgia quarterback Jamie Newman. Newman spent the last four seasons at Wake Forest before transferring over to Georgia this offseason to likely be the new starting quarterback taking over for the departed Jake Fromm. After taking over as a starter late in 2018, Newman finished 2019 second in the ACC in total yards per game with 26 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. We're going to take a look at some plays from Wake Forest's 2018 game against Pitt and last season's games against Louisville and Michigan State. Let's start with the Pitt game from two seasons ago. This was only his second career start, having made his first the week before against NC State and only playing sparingly in mop-up duty before that. These first few plays really showcase one of his best traits, his arm strength. Now at the snap, he's going to get a deep out from the slot to the left. This is the throw you want to see if guys can make, the opposite hash to outside the numbers throw. Newman is able to put it on a line for the completion here. Now if we take a look from behind, he shows good footwork on the three-step drop and gets the ball out on time in order to move the chains for the first down here. In staying with the pit game, now let's watch him throw on the run. As we run the play here, we can see that as the pocket collapses, he shows the mobility to get out on the edge to give himself a clean throwing opportunity. He gets a comeback at the top of the screen and Newman is able to deliver a perfect ball on the run to his receiver on the sideline. Let's take a look at the Louisville game now. He's going to get curls across the board. Now at the snap, he works the left side as his first two reads are covered. He works the pocket, stepping up and away from the pressure and delivers a ball to his third read to the outside with a strong throw. Now on the end zone angle, we can see him working from number two to number three and then ultimately to number one on the left side. It's a good job reading the field and going through his progressions to find the open target for a good game here. When we take a look at Newman's on-target percentages at the different areas of the field, we see that he did a good job in most of those areas. He showed good accuracy down the field, though he will need to improve on the intermediate balls outside the hashes and do better than 82% behind the line of scrimmage. Now let's watch him drive the ball down the field, this time from the pit game. His accuracy has slowly gotten better down the field throughout his career, and in addition, he's been very good at delivering a hard count and getting defenders to jump off sides for free plays, just as he does here. He gets a fade down the right sideline here and delivers a 25 plus yard back shoulder with great accuracy up and away from the defender. Now in the tight view, we get a good look at his release. He holds the ball high and has a bit of a wind up, and that's something that he showed early in his career, but his release has gotten slightly quicker and more compact over time. Back to the Louisville game now, Newman is going to get a hitch and go to the right at the bottom of the screen. Defender loops around and gets a hit on Newman at the throw, but he shows good poise to deliver another good ball down the field, and this time it's for a touchdown. Now let's look at the end zone view. He shows a nice, easy three-step drop after the play fake, and then shows good release while getting hit and delivers a great ball for the score. When we look at Newman's numbers under pressure in 2019, it was a mixed bag overall. His 66.7% on target rate ranked 11th in the country and his 83.7 IQR was 43rd. However, a 4.4% interception rate ranked 79th and suggests he needs to take better care of the ball and not force throws when the pocket starts to collapse. Now what sort of things does Newman need to work on? The first is his touch on certain throws. He's gotten better with it, but a lot of times wants to show off his arm strength and fire it in there instead of putting a little air under the ball. Now here he's going to get a right to left deep cross from his tight end and he's going to need to fit it into the zone inside three defenders here and especially this underneath linebacker. So he's going to need a little velocity on it to fit it in between the back two defenders but he needs to have a little bit more air under it to get it up and over the linebacker which here he's able to jump up and make the interception. Now on the tight copy, he does a good job giving a subtle look to the right to move the safety, but again, the ball is too much on the line and is picked off by the underneath defender. In addition to touch on passes, he struggles to show consistent on-spot accuracy out to the flats. In these three games, he had at least eight off-target throws out to the flats, something he's definitely going to need to work on. 
These last two plays are two of those examples. Now the first one is against Michigan State and it's a quick screen down to the trip side. After the play fake, he shows poor footwork and slightly drops his shoulder, which forces him to airmail the ball clear over his receiver's head and out of bounds. Finally, this last play is back from the pit game. This time it's a bubble screen to the number three up to the trip side. Now at the snap, he takes a couple of gather steps when this is a catch and throw play. The ball should be right on the receiver's face mask, yet it's thrown way behind the receiver who's unable to make the adjustment quick enough to make the grab. Now as we saw from the on target percentage field diagram a little bit ago, he needs to improve on the high percentage throws near or behind the line of scrimmage to gain these easy yards. Let's take a look now at Newman's stats against man coverage and zone coverage. He performed fairly well in both, but produced slightly better numbers overall against zone. His on target rate was about eight and a half points higher against zone than man, and his yards per attempt was just over one and a half yards better. Although his IQR was slightly better against man, he actually ranked better against zone. Now let's take a look at his performance from the first half and the second half separately. His numbers in the first half, which includes a 76.6% on target rate, a 105.4 IQR, and only a 2.9% interception rate are fairly decent, but when comparing them to his second half numbers, they're much better. His second half on target rate ranked 54th, his IQR ranked 71st, and his interception percentage ranked 75th. His performance seems to dip some late in games, and that's something he'll need to improve on moving forward. Newman will simulate pressure at times, lack touch on the ball when needed, and show inconsistency in his on-spot accuracy. However, he has the arm strength to make every throw in the field, the eye discipline to work defenders, and the mobility to work the pocket and escape when needed. It'll be interesting to see how much Newman progresses from his time at Wake Forest to 2020 with Georgia and a better overall supporting cast. With the news coming out that JT Daniels will be eligible this season, Newman will have his work cut out for him to be the starter. He's got some things to clean up, but he has the traits to work himself into a top five quarterback consideration in next year's NFL draft if all goes well. Make sure to go get the SIS Football Rookie Handbook or register for a free trial on the SIS Data Hub to see all of these stats and more for every player and also tune in each week to the Off the Charts podcast. Thanks for watching SIS Film Breakdowns.